Oh, you caught me. I like to break a mental sweat too. So uh, today, I, I want to share with you a little tip that was huge, huge, huge for me when I started transitioning more from one-on-one -on -one clients to groups, small and large groups. And it's this really cool idea of coaching and cueing that I got from some of my really good friends at TRX who are amazing group X instructors with tons of background and very, very talented. And it's this idea of triple threat cueing. I'm trying to speak to all the different learning styles and personalities within the group in a nice clean order. And I really felt that it helped effectively help me lead and cue exercises better and not have so many people off often in, uh, in the extremes, if you will. I know we've all kind of run into that situation where you feel like you're giving good cues and certain people just aren't getting it and you're feeling like they're not paying attention, but that's not always the case. So, so this idea of triple threat cueing is first, we're going to focus on auditory. Um, some people take in information best by hearing it. So with our auditory cues, the goal becomes how do we say more with less? If I give six, seven, eight, nine cues, they're going to get lost. But what one or two cues can I give that's really going to help an exercise? So a great example is abdominal bracing. Um, if I want someone to be tight through the trunk, I can tell them to brace like they're about to be punched in the stomach. That's going to do a lot of other good things that I don't have to now tell them to do. So it's one cue that does lots of different things. So first is auditory cue, but cue impactfully. How do you say more with less? Second is visual. So after you've given the auditory cue, you want to give a good visual demonstration. Some people learn much better by seeing than by hearing. So they need to see you do it and they need you to see you do it well. So if you perform an exercise poorly, you're just kind of, eh, you know, give them the quick and dirty version, they might perform it poorly just because they haven't seen a great example of it. So take the time to give a good visual demonstration. And if maybe it's an exercise you're not super confident on, that's okay. Make sure that you explain that you're not, own that weakness, and then tell them what would make it look better and, and try and show that maybe with a modification or some assistance. And then third and finally is tactile. Now, as personal trainers, when we get into a group setting, one of the first things we want to do when we see something wrong is go over and get our hands on someone and fix them. And, and that can be very powerful. There's a lot of great stuff with tactile cueing. However, if you have a group of 15 people, you can't tactile cue everybody. So start with the auditory. That's going to cover a lot of people. Then go into visual. That's going to cover. And if you have stragglers, if you have people that still haven't got it, they need to feel it. They need a good tactile cue. So then you're going to go over and maybe tap on the stomach to get that bracing or pull the shoulders down and back for good posture, whatever it is. Um, you know, I, and I know lots of different organizations talk about different ways to do tactile cueing and make sure it's in a comfortable environment. You know the person because you can cross lines. I totally agree with that. If it's someone you don't think is going to take well to being touched, then don't touch them. On the same token, if you go up to someone and say, Sally, can I touch you? I think that's even creepier than just kind of like putting your hand gently on their shoulder. So you, you got to be the judge of that and, and decide what it's going to be best. Um, I, I read that one time in a book. So enjoy, uh, enjoy those tips. I hope they work well for you.